Hi guys, Jason here. Welcome to the channel. This is a 100 watt Seriatone chopper. It is a next version of the good old pre-tone stack master Jose. Now this amp belongs to uh, a guy who here in Australia who sent it to me um, and he wants it to sound more like this. <laughs> So literally, I've just unboxed this thing, set it up uh, on the reactive load here, and spent you know half an hour or so playing with it, dialing it in. It's pretty cool, right? Pretty killer amp, really compressed. Um, if I was to be critical of it, I would say it's probably for me anyway, a little bit fuzzy and, and a little bit compressed. It's a really cool amp. I really like it. Um, it's fun to play. It's got a lot of sizzle. Um, but as I said, it's probably just lacking a little bit of um, punch through the, that kind of upper mid and mid range, which um, thinking about how I'm going to um, work on this thing to try and bring it into the sound, the kind of JJ sound, I guess, that Beat is chasing. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of gain out of the preamp, I think, and I'll also be focused on um, trying to take a little bit of that top end sizzle out.
I think the amp has improved anyway. Look, I think that it's got more punch. Um, it's not as fuzzy in the top end, right? And uh, the top end has been tamed and, you know, kind of rounded off, obviously, as per Bede's request. But I think more than anything, it's just got a bit more punch in the mid-range, more clarity. Uh, I can feel it under the fingers. It's not quite so kind of mushy, if you like, right? It's still easy to play because there's a lot of compression in this amp. But um, it's just, yeah, it's just got a bit more kind of kick in the guts and um, hopefully for bead, right, it's close to the uh, the tones from the Double J100, the Jerry Cantrell um, clip that he sent me. And he said, can you make it sound like this? Um, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. What will follow is a very detailed walkthrough of all the mods that I made to this amp. All right, well, it's definitely a chopper. Chopper 100, all right, sticker. And you can see it builds you here, it's November 2013. Now, interestingly, the spec of this amp, I've had a few minutes to look at this. Um, it's different than the layout that's posted, uh, that Nick has posted up on his website uh, today. Nick's layouts are awesome. If anyone hasn't checked out his, his amp layouts on his website, I suggest you do. Um, they're really good references, actually. Now, uh, the a couple of things that I've noticed that are different. Now here, look at the, these massive 0.68 microfarad cathode bypass caps. Enormous, they are. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, underneath here, these are... The cathode resistors for V1A and V1B, they're both 2K7 in this amp. Now, in Nick's layout, they are 860 ohms um, on the chopper now. 3K in the Yeti, it's 2K7. So it suggests to me that, you know, it's an early spec that over time, Nick has refined. Now, um, this is the plate resistor. 220k right plate resistor for v1a again in the chopper the layout's a 470k plate resistor now which is enormous 220 is kind of more what i would use actually um that underneath there you can't see it right but underneath there is the first coupling cap uh it's a 0 0.0022 and then the rest are 0 0.022, as you'd expect. Um, okay, moving along. What else uh, can I talk about? Here's our pre-tone stack master setup, right? 100K, 100K cathode resistor here. And then the 10K off the cathode with the coupling cap off to the volume, the master volume pot. Um, if you've seen any of my videos about Pre-Tone Stack Master Jose diode clipping, of which I have done many, you'll be familiar with this kind of setup. This is how it's all done on the turret board here. Now, one of the things that I do want to change in this amp, which is quite peculiar, and let me demonstrate just using the meter here. Um, I'll just plonk it there. So I've just got... Continuity checking on, okay? Now, just in terms of the filtering, all right, this is the node here for the preamp, B plus for the preamp for V1. Okay, this guy here, this is the nodes, the supply node for V2. So from here, we're going out and we're, here you go, we're supplying uh, straight to the plate of V2B which is our cathode follower, all right? So no plate resistor, goes straight from the B plus line to the plate pin on V2B. And then off the cathode, this yellow wire here, this cathode goes to this 100K resistor, which is the cathode, 100K cathode resistor, the cathode follower, right? Okay, now this guy here should have its own uh, filter cap right 
you know, 47 microfarad or something like that. And it does, right? Traditional Marshall, it's got a big can cap sitting right underneath the board. It's the chassis mount can cap. However, what I want to show you is that it's not decoupled from the phase inverter supply. There's the phase inverter supply here at the junction of the 100K and the 82K resistors on the phase inverter. And this guy is coupled. And if I go all the way over here, this is a two by 50 microfarad can cap. It's bridged together, 100 microfarad filter on the phase inverter. There it is. Okay, happy days. It's also connected to here though. What I'm saying is that there's no dropping resistor from here to here. You would normally see a 10K dropping resistor, right? Between this supply node and this supply node, thereby, thereby decoupling that, uh, that stage in the B plus you know, filter line. Now the B plus supply line, I should say. So from here to here, it's decoupled. There's a, according to the layout, there's a 10K uh, drop-in resistor soldered to the can cap. We'll have a look at that because I'll pull it out from the top. Okay, so I do want to change the filtering in the sample. I'm going to insert a 10K dropper between the PI node and uh, the supply node for V2. I think that's important. In terms of the kind of the rest of the tonal changes that uh, Bede, who's a customer, the owner of the scent, is looking for, he's looking for it to kind of darken it up a little bit. Let me get rid of a bit of that, maybe a bit of that buzziness in the top end. Um, I'm going to play around with a few things, uh, see what I can get working. And once I'm happy with it, we'll come back and I'll show you what I've done. I flipped the amp over. And um, this is the can cap that I was talking about, right? For the, that's supplying the preamp, or, you know, the filter cap for the preamp, um, V for V1. I'm gonna pull this out from the top and see what we can, uh, see what we can do in terms of inserting a, an additional 10. One of the things you can do with replacing a um, can cap, right, particularly in a Marshall lamp, you can just do it from the top. I've seen guys on YouTube, right? I've seen them pull the whole board out. So imagine the, the chassis flipped up. They pull the whole ST1 PCB out to get to the can cap that's sitting underneath it. You don't have to do that. Flip the amp up the right way, undo the uh, the clamp, and you'll be able to pull the thing out. Now with Marshall lamps, the, they're, pretty, um, they're pretty free with the lead length. So you'll be able to pull the can cap out without any worries and resolder the new one in there. On this chopper, the leads are a little short, so I'm gonna to have to be pretty careful and tricky. Um, I can see one of the ground leads already come off, right? So I'm gonna to have to solder that back on. It's no problem. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert this additional 10K uh, dropper on here to provide that what i would call a proper filter network all right so i have been pissing around with this thing for most of the afternoon and um i'm pretty happy i reckon this is um this is good to go uh and this is as featured in this clip right when uh we hear the post mod tones now i'm going to show you the mods that I've made because that's what I do on this channel. No, no secrets. Um, I'm not just going to play you a modded amp and then go ha ha ha. I'm going to show you what I've done. So, uh, as I said, this this is kind of an earlier spec uh, chopper, not like Nick's current spec as I outlined before. So, um. Uh, Bede, who owns the Sam, wanted this thing to be darker, kind of a bit more punch, I reckon, um, less fuzzy. And, you know, he sent me a clip of Jerry Cantrell playing his double J 
uh, 100 amp and said, can you make it sound like this? <laughs> so um, here's what we've done. Right, first plate resistor here. This was 220K stock. I've got a 220 and a 100, and over the 100, the good old, this is a 470 picofarad uh, plate snubber. All right, very common technique. What this does is it's taking away some high end, all right, taking like chopping out high end, high frequencies out of the signal. This is how we're kind of keeping the amp not quite so kind of fizzy and fuzzy. Okay, that's part of it. Um, the next thing I've done is the amp's a bit, to me, the stock amp is a bit kind of congested and a bit bassy in the preamp, and it's already got a 0 0.0022 first coupling cap here, and then 0 0.022 there on. Um, but I've, what I did was, this is not a well kind of used technique, well, certainly some, some folks use it. It works fantastically. On this game pot, the 220K resistor, and you run it from the input of the gain pot to ground, right? So I got in here and got onto the input to the gain, the first lug on the pot. And there's a ground reference here on the other side of this double pole, double throw switch, right, on this pot here. So we're running 220K. This is a one meg pot with a 220K in parallel now. So it's about, well, you can do the maths on it, right? What does it work out? Probably a bit under 200. Um, I don't have my parallel resistor calculator here. But by reducing the value of this pot, what you're actually doing is you're setting up a high pass filter, right? The, this pot in conjunction with the coupling cap acts as a high pass filter. The larger the value of this pot, the more bottom end you'll be letting through. This kind of leans out the gain. All right, leans out the bottom end and it leans out the gain by doing this. And this preamp has got so much gain in it that, um, you know, it easily gets too muddy. Um, so this is a really cool way, if you're finding this in, in your amp, right? 220K, you can play with different values in here to get um, a different value of the pot, but it works really, really well. What else? Light resistor on the tone stack was a 47K. I've gone back to standard Marshall 33K. I find the 47Ks and so on yeah, too scooped for me. They get all kind of scoops out all the mid-range. I don't like it. I'm an old-fashioned Marshall 33K standard Marshall tone stack. Um, 470K pick a ferret here across the... Plate resistor, this is a 100k plate resistor for V2A. Again, this is just peeling off fuzzy top end before it heads off into the master volume and the diode clipping um, set up for the Jose mod. All right, so that's what that is. Um, I'll mark these up, I'll mark these changes up on next scheme. I think just to make it really clear for anybody, and you could apply these kind of changes to either a Yeti or a um, or a chopper um, if you were so inclined. Okay, next I'm just moving kind of through the amp here. Um, what is next? I've changed the negative feedback tap. So this blue wire here was the negative feedback. It was off the green tap on the impedance selector, which was four ohms. And remember that my customer here wanted an amp that was a bit tighter, a bit darker. So I've moved it across to the 8 ohm tap, which is going to give me more negative feedback. Moving along, the fizz cap on the phase inverter is a 47 picofarad stock. I've moved that to 100 picofarad. Again, shaving off some top end here. Per the customer's instructions, um, wanted a darker amp. Okay, next thing I've did is I changed the presence pot here back to a standard 0.1 microfarad. Okay, so uh, the last thing is the B plus line, power supply. So I made the change underneath the board here from the top. 
um, and put in the um, the 10k dropper on the B plus line that the amp should have. I think I think that's an oversight actually. Um, so that's now in there, and um, I measured the voltages um, with that change in. And this amp, it's only got 450 volts on the plate, right? So, you know, for a 100 watt kind of amp that's, you know, of this class, probably more used to seeing 465, 470. Um, so 450 on the plate, and it had an 18K dropper here, 18K dropping resistor um, from the screen supply to the phase inverter. Phase inverter supply as measured here on the junction of the 82K and the 100K. Pretty low, 315, I think it was, which, you know, pretty cool for a plexi, um, particularly one that you're going to put on a Variac, but for this amp, I want that a bit higher, uh, particularly as I've got the extra 10k dropper in there now and it cascades through. So I moved this dropper, I took that 18k out and I put 10k in. Let's measure the voltages and I'll show you what we've got. So voltages, let's check the AC. So I'm using my Variac here to get, you know, what is, you can see there, right? Pretty much bang on 240. Okay, let's move to DC. And we'll go straight to pin 3. One of these power tubes here. And there's our plate voltage. As I said, 450, right? So, if, you know, it's 449. Let's call it 450. There's our B plus there. And... Remember what I said, uh, I have changed this dropping resistor. So let's just move this over. This is our screen supply node. Okay. Um, so between the B plus line and the screen supply node is the choke. The choke connects those two. Now the other side of that dropping resistor this is now our phase inverter node supply. As I said, it was kind of about 315 before, give or take, and 370 is kind of, for an app like this, is more what I'm looking for. And you can see this is the supply here at the junction of the 82K and the 100K. That's our phase inverter supply. Um, I've got my 10K dropper in now. So this is the supply for V2B, right, straight on the plate, 332. And while I'm here, let's measure the voltage at the top of the 100K on the cathode follower, 221. Okay, now here's the node for V1, 321. 321 and always a good check right let's have a look at the plate of v1a 163 okay works in an amp like this i think anything you know kind of get into the 130 or below uh too fuzzy too mushy so this has got a bit more kind of boldness back in the amp now well that's it for the video guys i hope you enjoyed it if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please do. More than 60% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed to the channel yet. If you're one of those, do it now. Hit subscribe, click the bell, you'll be notified of new content, and I'll see you soon.